Hello YouTubers, now I'm doing my rankings on the seat on the Peter Dyson era seasons. Now let's get something straight. Uh, Peter Dyson only was the Doctor for three years and three seasons, which doesn't bother me at all. I really enjoy this era. I think Peter Dyson's Doctor is a really underrated and unappreciated Doctor, and I think his Doctor deserves more appreciation than get, and I'm glad that his first two seasons are now on Blu-ray, which gives his Doctor more appreciation will give his Doctor more appreciation, and I really enjoy his, his era. And let's get something straight, I don't think there was a really a bad era for us in this season. I think all the Peter Dayton seasons are great. Um, so, let's begin. At number 3, we have season 20. Now, season 20, I think, is a really good season. I don't think it is as bad as what other people say it is. They, they often consider it as one of the weakest seasons from the John Ethan Turner era of the show, but... I don't think so. I think it was a really, it was a fun season. It did so well for a 20th anniversary season. It brought back so many classic series mods and villains, like the Black Guardian, the Mara, the Cybermen, the Daleks, Omega, the Master. Also brought back some fan favorite companions like Serenade Smith, Brigadier, K-9, Jamie, Sergeant Benton, Liz Saw. So yeah, the list is endless with this season. Um, the Ark Infinity is such a great story. I really enjoy that story. That is such a really underrated and unappreciated story. I don't think that story deserves all the hate it gets. It's a really fun story. I think it's really under underrated. Although, I don't think Omega's design is, is as good as what it was during like the 1970s. With the three doctors during like the late John Poe era, but it it's still pretty a pretty unique looking design, just not as good as the one from the seventies. Um, Snake, and I think Ark Infinity was such a great start to season twenty. So yeah, uh, Snake Dance, great story, although not as good as Kinder, but still really great. I love how Tegan is like suffering from post traumatic stress from the events of Kinder, considering that she was badly possessed by the Mara. From, from the first season, uh, the first season, from the first season, um, so yeah, and then we have Mordor and Dead, great story, it was such, it was so nice to see the Brigadier return after, after a so long, as he hadn't been seen since Terror of the Zygons of Tom Baker's, like, second season, so it was great to see him come back, and I really, it was such a great debut to Tolo, Tolo, in my opinion, he's like my favourite companion from the Peter Dyson era. I, his companion is so underrated and unappreciated. He's such a great companion. I think he deserves more appreciation than he gets. Uh, and it was nice to see the Black Guardian return, who had not been seen since Tom Baker's first season, so it was nice to see him come back. And I just love how the Mordron was wearing, like, the Fourth Doctor's, like, season 18 trench coat. That was pretty cool. And um, I just loved how he said when he, just before he died, he said, is this death? I felt like that story, I felt like that was kind of, like, foreshadowing the Fifth Doctor's regeneration in a sort of way. Like, you could tell it was, that it was, like, really foreshadowing the Fifth Doctor's regeneration. Uh, Terminus, um, it's an okay story. I don't, I really like the wolf-like creature, I think it's a, a unique looking design, I think it suits in it. Tegan's, um, Nessa's exit in that is pretty good, like she just, and how her and the Fifth Doctor kiss each other. So yeah, the Black Guardian's really terror, is really terrifying in that, in that story, this is like where he, he's becoming more and more terrifying. Um... Overall, what I think of Terminus, it's an okay story, not one of the best Peter Davidson stories, but okay, it's not as bad as what people say it is. Then we got Ian Leiderman, fantastic story, probably like, in my opinion, the best story out of season 20, I love everything about it. The different um, ships like floating in space, like mixed between 19th century and 18th century, it felt really nice. The Black Guarding is so terrifying in that story, like... How he teleports, randomly teleports in and out. Like, that is so terrifying. It still terrifies me to this date. It was such a really dark story. And Tolo basically nearly dying. Like, really was giving me a lot of heavy jibbers. 
So yeah, and I just love in line like that is like literally like one of my favorite Peter Davison stories of all time. It's a fantastic story. I'm so glad that with the Blu-ray release, it's made it a lot more better. Like what they've done to with it. So yeah, fantastic story. One of my favorite Peter Davison stories of all time. And then we got King's Demons, uh, pretty good season 20 final, not one of the best, but still a pretty good story. I love the sword fight between the Fifth Doctor and the Master, it just reminded me of the sword fight with the Third Doctor and the Master from, in the Sea Devils from John Pertwee's third season, so yeah, there's a nice callback to that. Uh, yeah, and, and there was a nice debut to Chameleon, who was also another underrated and unappreciated companion. Basically, he's a shape shifting robot. So yeah, I feel like they he that compan he really didn't get much appreciation than he deserved. He is such an underrated, unappreciated companion. And then we got the Five Doctors fantastic twentieth anniversary special. I love that story. That's another one of my favorite reputation stories of all time. Um, it was nice to. Original Hartnell did such a great job playing the first Doctor, considering William Hartnell passed away during like the mid-1970s, 1975. It's nice to see both Pat Trell and John Pertwee come back. Uh, Pat Trell looks like he was actually like starting to age at that point. And he's like, at that point, like he looked a little bit older than he did when he did the Three Doctors. It was, it was pretty, I just love how that Civil War, it was really funny when that Civil War warrior stabbed the Cybermen. Like cutting their heads off and stuff when he stabbed that Simon in his chest unit piece and how that Simon goes Aah! That was so funny. So that's how that Simon screamed after he got stabbed by that Civil Warrior sword stick thing. It was pretty funny. So yeah. Um it was such a shame Tom Baker didn't come back to do that story. Um as as he just didn't there, there was a lot of key facts. Um, he, first of all, he just didn't see eye to eye with John Nathan Turner, and, um, he had just, like, recently, and he left the show, like, about two years ago, after, two years ago after he did season 18, so, as he stated that it was far too soon, he had just left the show, like, two years ago, um, but he did, Tom Baker did state later in life, he really, he really regretted it, and wish he did do it. But overall, I think this, the Fire Doctors is fine the way it is. It's a fantastic story. And I believe there's actually a four-parter edition of that story. And hopefully that when the Blu-ray release of Season 20 comes out here in, in Australia, i will love to see it in the four-part edition of it and see how it goes. So yeah, fantastic. Overall, Season 20 is a really good season. Not one of the best, but, but not the weakest either. And it's actually, and I figured they, the BBC did the right choice releasing that season, releasing that season on Blu-ray next. And I think that now it's now it's released on Blu-ray. I think that season's now getting a lot more appreciation than it deserves, getting the appreciation it deserves. So yeah, season twenty, really good season. So uh, number two, we have season nineteen. Um, I really love the season. This is the first season to bring a whole new look to the show, even though season eighteen was the was technically the first season to bring a whole new look to the show. But I feel like season 19 was the first proper JNT, like John Nathan during the season, I meant to say. I, as I feel like season 19 just acted more like the prototype John Nathan Turner season. But season 19, in my opinion, just felt like, really felt like the proper John Nathan Turner season, in my opinion. So yeah... Um, Cash of Elba, such a great debut to Peter Davison's Doctor. I really loved the flashback opening sequence with the fourth Doctor where Logopolis left off, as the Keeper Truck and Logopolis and Cash of Elba were just considered as a trilogy. So yeah, <laughs> as a trilogy. And I liked how they did that, kind of did that with, like what they did, like the what the, they did with the modern series, like what they did with Naya Doctor, Daya Doctor, Tyler Doctor and Deep Breath. As a saga, like deep breath, leaving off where Time Doctor left off, left off. So yeah, overall, it's a great. Overall, and I find that story to be really underrated. Like people only watch it for part one, but it's a really enjoyable story. There's a lot of mysteries going around and how they're stuck in a time loop, which is pretty messed up. Which was caused by the master. 
It was nice to see the Fifth Doctor finally selling into his regeneration as his regeneration was going a bit wrong, so yeah. Overall, Castrovel is a really underrated so and I think it's a great story and such a great start to the Peter Davison era. Fort of Doomsday, re- another great story. Barry, I really loved all the how it's multi, It's a, like a multicultural story where these androids are dressed up as different cultures and ethnics. I loved how they, they showed us the indigenous Australians of Australia. That felt so great they added that in to the indigenous population of Australia. So yeah, um, I just love how Hidden Lighting was shrunk down to size and the fifth doctor gives him hell and says, well, he's going to be needing where he's going. That was pretty funny. Yeah, and then we got Kinder, fantastic story. Love that story. Like, it's dark, it's horrific. It, I really love it. The Mara is such a terrifying creature. I feel like the CGI, a lot of people prefer the CGI version from the Blu-ray release, but... I kind of prefer the puppet version. It just feels more nostalgic. and In my opinion, that's just my opinion, but the CGI version make, makes it look way more terrifying and more intimidating. So, yeah, I like so, so I don't mind it. So, fantastic story. Kinder just does so well for a post-70, a 1970s story, in my opinion. Like, they knew... Like, <laughs> what I was trying to say is they... It's a fantastic story, and you should really watch it. I, it's definitely one of my favourite Peter Davison stories of all time. It does so well for a post nineteen seventy story, like having that real dark horror to it. Visitation, not a great story. I really enjoy that story. That's another one of my favourite Peter Davison stories. Um, basically, that story with I love the design of those creatures in it, the visitation creatures. Now I don't know what they're called. Can someone please? Comment down below what they're called. So yeah, and I'd love to see an action figure of that creature getting made, those creatures being made someday, like doing a visitation box set, but it's 50-50 if Carrot Orton's will make it or not. I'm glad that Eagles Moss made that creature really well. Does such a great job what they did making that fig, making the, making it. And also the visitation would be, it was really sad that they destroyed the Sonic Screwdriver halfway in that story, like, basically, the visitation would basically be the Sonic Screwdriver's last appearance in the original series, and then it, until the, until the TV movie, where it briefly made a cameo, um, where it was briefly made a cameo in the TV movie, and then was fully used again by the modern series. I think why they didn't want to use that anymore, uh, John A. Fintana just thought the Sonic Screwdriver was becoming really overused at that point. Um, so basically the visitation would be the last story, would be the Sonic Screwdriver's last appearance in the original series, so yeah. So, yeah, and then we have Black Orchard, great story. According to behind the scenes, Peter Davison really hated Black Orchard, but I, I like it, it's like a very murder mystery, it does so well for a two-part, and the, it gets really dark towards the ending when that guy basically, who was horribly disfigured, he jumps off a cliff and kills himself, that's... This is basically the first time we ever see suicidal in the show. No, or self-harming in the show, I meant to say. First time we ever see it. So yeah, it's a great story. I don't know why Peter Davison hates it. It's a great story. And then we got Earthshock. Fantastic story. Another one of my favourite Peter Davison stories of time. It was nice to see the Simon come back after so long. that They haven't been seen since Tom Baker's first season. And I just love the design of the Simon. The Simon, I feel like the 1980s design of the Simon is like the most iconic look to the Simon of all time. Whenever I think of the original series, Simon, I just think of that design. Fantastic design. And I just, David Banks does such a fantastic job as the Cyber Leader. Like, excellent. So, we meet again, Doctor. That's <laughs> so well done. And basically, it's another dark story because it's basically... The first, it's basically the first time since w- William Hartnell's like last full season where we see a companion basically getting killed off by that story. So it was really dark. And all, honestly, I just really think that Earthshock should have been the season 19 final, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. I just feel like it should have been the season 19 final, not the one after that came after it. And then we got... Time Flight, which is the one that came after Earthshock. 
a really shit story. It's absolutely pointless. Um, I feel like the acting, the chemistry between Peter Davis and Anthony Allen as the fifth Doctor and the Master is the only good thing about that story. Um, and the other thing that was only good about it was to see seeing both Atric and the Merker come back, but they were just that was about it. So yeah. Um, Time Flight is a really shit story, probably like one of the worst stories of the show. And honestly, as I said before, I feel like season 19 should have ended with Earthshock because you ha Earthshock was such a fantastic story and that should have been the season 19 final. As Earthshock had the most silent credits. Uh, oh, I forgot to say that Earthshock had the most silent credits for part 4, which is has never been used in the whole entire show before and it hasn't been used even to the modern series so hopefully they do give us silent credits for the modern series at one point hope they do that but overall as i said before time flight is a really shit story and i probably won't i only watch it in a marathon and that's it so overall season 19 is a great season and definitely probably like one of the best john nathan turner seasons Season 19 is probably the first season to be really high in rating since Tom Baker's sixth season. As season 19 got up to a whoopee, got up to an average of 9.24 million views in the UK. So, and basically it would be the last season to be really high in the ratings for a while. And then the ratings were just, from 1983 to 1985, would just remain at an average of 7 million. And then they just declined really heavily around 1986. So yeah, um, but overall, season nine, season nineteen is basically to this still remains to this day as the sixth most highest rated season in the whole show. And I don't see any. I don't. I don't think the modern series has ever been as high as any of the. Has never been as high as t William Hartnell's second season or any. Or Tom Baker's like first three seasons, only six seasons, or even been as high, higher, been as high as like John Pertwee's fourth season, or even been as high as like Peter Davison's first season. I don't think the modern series will ever get as high as these seasons were during like the 1960s, 1970s, and the early 1980s. So overall, season 19 is a great season. I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad it got released and blew that I had high expectations that would I just sensed that was going to be the next season to be released on Blu-ray after Tom Baker's first season and I was right. So I'm glad it's on Blu-ray and it was actually the season 19 is basically the first classic series Doctor Who season I ever I ever got on Blu-ray so yeah I'm glad I have it and I was really lucky to get my hands on it. So at number one we have season 21. In my opinion, season 21 is a fantastic se season and probably like one of the best John Lee from Turner seasons. Like it's up there along with seasons 25 and 26 and 26. I consider it like the, like one of my favorite John, uh, John Lee from Turner seasons. Like I consider it like his third best season as producer. And probably like, in my opinion, it's probably like one of the best seasons of the 1980s has to offer. Warriors of the Deep is a great story, such a great start um, to to that season. It's Warriors of the Deep is such a really underrated and unappreciated story. The design of the Sly Ewings is great. I know I they did try to keep that design. They try to keep them them to say faithful to the uh, to the design for the nineteen seventies, even though there was a bit of an issue. But the seventy. The design for the Sly Urines in that story is still great, but not as good as the ones from the night from the from the early John uh John John Pertwee era. So yeah, um, the Merka, um, that that sea devil like creature was such a is such a terrifying looking creature. I really hope when season twenty one gets on released on Blu-ray, they will fix it for full CGI. For full CGI, um, I have a funny feeling that season twenty one will be released on Blu-ray for next year. Next year, I was really hoping it would be released on Blu-ray last year or this year, but highly doubt that. But it may. I honestly, it's going to be really. I think that's it's going to be released on Blu-ray for next year, and so I really hope when they do release it on Blu-ray, they will fix the Merker in CGI for the Blu-ray release. So can't wait to see what it'll look like in CGI. 
The Awakening, fantastic story, does so far well for a two-parter. It is... Oh, I meant to say that the Warriors of Deep had a, such a dark ending when all the humans, sea devils, and sly urines basically all died in the end, the Fifth Doctor said. There should have been another way. That, I feel like that's one of the most darkest endings for the show. And yeah, so Warriors of Deep is such a really underrated and unappreciated story. I think it deserves more appreciation than it gets. And it, because it really had like one of the most darkest endings for the whole show. In my opinion. And then we have The Awakening Fantastic Story. A really dark horror, horror-like theme story. Another one of my favourite Peter Dayton stories of all time. The Dean Creature is so terrifying. That's another really underrated, unappreciated story. And I think that story deserves more appreciation than it gets. I just love how, how this how this how they how these all these characters are all dressed up in like 18th century, which is really well really well done, and I just love how that guy sacrificed himself to save everyone's life. In the end, uh, throwing that that villain guy, what's his name, into the straight into the hands of the of that demon creature, which was really dark. So yeah. The Awakening is a fan is a fantastic story and I think it deserves more respect appreciation than it deserves it does so well for two-parter it was originally intended to be a four-parter um the only existing footage of the the original four-parter cut was the the scene having chameleon in it and chameleon was originally supposed to be in that story as he warned taken that he, he could sense danger of the demon creature i really wish they would so who knows if once that scene 21 come gets released on blu-ray I honestly hope that they will re- give us the release of the the director's cut version of that story. I would love to see what the four-parted version was like, and seeing all the deleted scenes, and seeing it as a four, as the original four-part edition for that story, and seeing co- giving us more chameleon. So yeah, then we got Frontiers, another fantastic story, another one I favorite Peter Dayton story of the time. I loved how that was such a another dark story, like how. All these people get sucked down into the Earth's crust from these millipede-like creatures. And it really explored more of Tolu's character, like, how he's, like, suffering from, like, his 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 people fought against these the tractor barbs. And him, like, basically suffering from post-traumatic stress. Like, I feel like, in my opinion, Tolu was, like, the fir- was, like, the... acted like the first proper mo- acted like the first modern series companion and i just loved how he is and i think they really did such a great job exploring tolo's character in that story like basically him suffering from post-traumatic stress from the war that these people went with the tractor bobs and how he's so afraid of them like post so yeah and loved how the tar they took the risk by having the tars be torn apart so yeah that's pretty it's a dark story and i just love the soundtrack in that story the didgeridoo the how they use that bit of that didgeridoo kind of theme to it sound to it so yet the soundtrack in it is really fantastic i love that story i would love to watch it again frontiers is and so yeah frontiers is a fantastic story one of my favorites so yeah and then, uh, basically, that was basically the last story I needed to complete on DVD. And that's it. I Because I nearly had all of these stories from the Peter Davison era. I just needed that story, and that was it. But it was becoming a lot more harder to get here on, in Australia, so I'm glad I got it. So, it's completed. Um, so, now we got Resonance of the Dogs, which is another one of my favorite Peter Davison stories of all time. It's dark, it's gritty, it's really horrifying. It had such the Philip Hinchcliffe feeling to it, like Daleks basically bleeding out white blood, which is pretty messed up. Dav- and that, it was also terrifying when Davros tries to escape. He's bleeding out like white blood from his chair, like he's like that he wasn't a Dalek, but it was still pretty messed up. And seeing those people battling against the Daleks, becoming wholly infected by that disease. And I just loved how that one of companion helped the Doctor and his companions escape the hands of the clutches of the Daleks by killing himself. Because he was becoming possessed. He was basically under control by the Daleks. And him sacrificing himself in the end. Which is the second time we ever see suicide. Um, 
where he committed suicide just to save the Doctor's life. It was nice to see the Supreme, the Black Supreme Novel come back, which hadn't been seen since William Hartnell's last full season. So yeah. Um, basic and Resurrection of the Daleks was basically the first ever classic series story and, and the first ever Doctor Who story I ever owned on DVD. So yeah, that's why I have a, it's a special place in my heart. And I think the four-part edition of that story works so much better than the two-part edition. I just feel like the standard, the television broadcasting version of the two-part edition just really drags a lot. And I think the four-part edition of that story works so much better. If you want to do a marathon, if you take my advice, if you're doing like a marathon with, doing a marathon, make sure you've got to watch the, watch Resurrection of the Daleks. you got to, if you what if you get up to Resurrection Alex, make sure you, it's the four part edition. The four part edition is so much better because it was originally intended to be a a four parter story, but there was a lot of complications due to the uh, Winter Olympics during that year. So yeah, I just prefer the four part edition. That's just my opinion. I know some people may prefer the two part edition, but who cares? Um, then we got Planet Fire, a really underrated story. Another dark story. It's nice to see we're introduced to Tolo's people. And it's really sad to see uh, Chameleon get killed. It was really sad that Chame Chameleon ended up committing suicide in the end. Um, this is basically the foot, like basically this, um, like the fourth time we ever see the doctor kill someone, kill someone, but he didn't want to kill Chameleon because he really did like him. But he had no choice as Chameleon was coming possessed by the Master. It was so horrifying to see the Master get horribly burned. But overall, and the chemistry, and I feel like the the acting chem, the acting and the chemistry between Peter Davis and Anthony Allen at that point is really at peak right there. And it just makes me wish that Peter Davison had just stayed on for one more season because I would have loved to see him interacting with Anthony Allen a lot more. I just feel like, in my opinion... Uh, Anthony Allen works so much better with Peter Davison than he did with Colin Baker. Colin Baker or Sylvester McGoy, that, but that's just my opinion. Um, Planet Fire is a really underrated story. Another one of my favourite Peter Davison stories. It's dark. It, it's really dark. And not one of the darkest stories of this season, but still really dark. As to introducing us to self-harming. So yeah, and it was, and I found it really sad seeing Tolo depart. That was like, a lot of people consider Tegan's departure from Resurrection of the Daleks really sad, but I think Tolo in my, considering that Tolo was my, was like my favorite companion from this era, from the Peter Davison era, and one of my favorite classic series companions. It was such a, it was so sad to see him go, to see him go. And I really, I would have loved to see Tolo stay on along with Peter Davis and be on for one more season because I just really would love to have a little bit more of the fifth Doctor and Tolo. So yeah, honestly, uh, what if, if they, I know that season 21 was meant to be a, a seven serial season, but I think that they, they could have added in a Sultana story air between like Resurrection Daleks and Planet Fire just so we could have a little bit more of the fifth Doctor and Tolo together. That's just my opinion. And and then, and it was a nice debut to um, Perry, even though I consider her, even though she's like one of my least favorite classic series companions. It's just a nice debut, as she is, I considered to be a very popular and iconic classic series companion. And then we got probably the one of the best classic series of all time, the Kazan Drazani. Fantastic story. This was like the first uh, classic series story I ever watched. It's a fantastic story. Um, it's dark, it's gritty, it's it's messed up, it's very, it's got such a Philip Hinchcliffe feeling to it. It was such a, I just love how, the, and dealing with, it was the first story to ever deal with pol, pol, being very political, and how it deals with corruption and stuff. So yeah, very dark story, one of the most darkest stories of all time, I was really terrified of that story. How that guy actually killed that guy by pushing him off a cliff. Um, overall, it's a fantastic story, and it's actually like, and my it is my favorite Peter Davison story of all time. Peter Davison acting is really spot on in that story. 
on that story. Like, I feel like his acting at that point was really at peak in that story. At peak in that story. Like, Peter Davison's acting started off very sturdy, sort of very slow and sturdy during season 19. It gets better. His acting does get better in, around season 20, and it become and it gets better and better. Better. It gets even more better around season 21. And I feel like the Kate Androzani was where his acting portrayal of the Doctor was really at peak. At peak. And so, yeah, the Kate Androzani is a fantastic story and such a fantastic closure to Peter Davison's Doctor. And, and it was really... I really wish that Peter Davison had stayed on for one more season, but that's just my opinion. And then we have Twin Day Now, even though that's part of the Columbia era. I heard it's really shit, and... Honestly, I really think, like with season 9, with Urshok being the season uh, 19 final, I feel like the Keizer and Rosani should have been the season 21 final. Like, what they should have done, if they wanted season 21 to be a, to have seven serials, they should have, like, added in a Sultanan story that aired between Resurrection and Daleks and Planet of Fire, so we have a little bit more of the Fifth Doctor and Tolo together, and have Keizer and Rosani be the season 21 final. And, 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 like, have Twin Nella be the season 22 opener instead. That would have worked so much better and just maybe cut out the scene with the fifth doctor. Not with the sixth doctor strangling Perry and it would have made the year a lot more better. And Colin Baker could have ended up doing the show for maybe, like, another four, for, like, another, like, like, two or three more seasons. Three more seasons? Like, we could have had a little bit more of Colin Baker's doctor. So overall, season 21 is a fantastic scene. It's one of my favourite classic series scenes of all time and probably like, and definitely one of the best scenes from the, definitely one of the best 1980s seasons and one of the best John Nathan Turner seasons of all time. I really, and I honestly, and I really hope that season does get released on Blu-ray for next year and then that's it. The Peter Day scenario is, is basically complete because we've basically... But basically, that's the basically season twenty one and season twenty five are the only scenes we need now to be released on Blu-ray for the John Nathan Turner era of the show, and that's it. Um, but I honestly think that season twenty one, season twenty five will be the last two John Nathan Turner scenes, seasons to be released on Blu-ray. It surprises me that the BBC has released the Peter Dawson era is the only era of Doctor Who. Of the original series where all his seasons were released in critical or not all out of place. Like the others. But yeah. Honestly think. So yeah. Season 21. Fantastic season. Uh, fantastic season. Overall that was my entire rankings on the Peter Davison seasons. I will probably see you next time. Maybe for some rankings on the Colin Baker seasons. Because this year well, marks the 40th. I meant to say that this year marks the uh, 40th anniversary of Peter Davison's departure from the show, and this year also marks the 40th anniversary of Colin Baker's debut to the show. So, lay now, bye, not forever. This is Duke Kado, signing off. Bye.